Welcome back. Here we are, ready to implement the this keyword. Now the basic idea here is that uh, we have so imagine we have a class like this that references some field on the instance. So it has the this keyword and something. Then when we have a method call like this. The way it's actually evaluated is that we first evaluate this part, uh, sorry, this part, uh, which returns a function and then we call it. So when we do that evaluation, we will make a local environment where this is bound to, uh, in this case, cake. And then we evaluate the function with that environment. And in that way, it, the this keyword will always refer to what the function was called on, accessed on, uh, which is basically this diagram. But the first thing is that we should add, uh, add this keyword, which we don't have yet. So let us uh, go into the scanner and uh, wait a second. Or oh, is this an expression that we're looking for? Uh, yeah, so Interesting. Actually, I also have a GitHub Copilot enabled now, and this is uh, exactly what we wanted as it happens. And now it's saying that not sure what it's saying, but apparently there's an error somewhere. Ah, so here's the problem. Um, Yeah, so now there's a missing match arm, which uh, we already know. But let's uh, avoid that for now and let's go into the parser. And we need to go into the identifier match, same place as where that is happening. Kind of forget how everything works when you've been a while away from it for a while. Uh, but it should be near the bottom. Yeah, it's in the primary. Primary. Okay, here we go. So let me just uh, check that this is already, yeah, okay, there it is. It is already a reserved keyword. So in the parser, um, we can just say, if it's a this token, then we need to set the result as a as that exactly. I think. Interesting. So what is the token? It's just called called this. 
So in here we are matching on the token type, which could be a this. And now we have another this, which is an expression. So let maybe if I do like so, it should be fine. And this one, I guess we also have to match on that. Um, mm -hmm. Okay, these are just some helpful things, which don't really matter. Uh, let me... F so what it wants me to do is this. So I guess I can just do that. So I'll see you in a second. Okay. Anyway, so now in primary a passing you match on this and we probably also have to advance I guess go to the next token yeah because it's just if we go up here line on this line we only peak and then we have to remember to advance so we don't get into some infinite loop stuck on this all right anyway now uh, the hard part we have to resolve at least I think it's the hard part um, yeah exactly so missing match on this and we'll put it down here and so that we don't need So now the question is what we should do. It says resolve local. That doesn't make any sense anyway. So resolve local. What is it this one does? Okay, it just puts, puts the ID into the locals. Uh, so that should be fine. Let's remove that. And also that one. What's it complaining about? Ah, okay. And another. Expected. Ah, it wants a token, so I guess that is just the keyword. Great. So now let's have a look at the class resolution and We resolve it exactly like any other local variable using this as the name of the variable. Of course, that's not going to work right now because this isn't declared in the scope. Let's fix that over and visit class statement. Yeah, so actually kind of weird that it's done like this. Maybe we need to move these guys up. And unwrap that and down here put an OK. And wonder why everything is highlighted. So 
So maybe that's why, that's why. Great. Anyway, so now we need to begin a scope. And it is like almost, it already knows what I want to do, kind of. Let me see, though, I don't really get why we would need this thing. So let's, let's uh, get rid of that. And this should be fine. Actually, we need to say uh, last. Oh, actually, maybe we do need to say last mute. And what now? What is it complaining about? Let me try. So, ah, so actually the unwrap was necessary. So uh, it's not uh, looking well for me. The GitHub Copilot already is better than me. Anyway, end scope. So in case you're curious, like. This drop down menu is from the language server protocol. It just knows what's available. And the, the grayed out thing is from GitHub Copilot. Uh, so that's what's happening there. Okay. When this expression is encountered, it will resolve to a local variable defined in implicit scope just outside the block for the method body. The resolver has a new scope for this, so the interpreter needs to create a corresponding environment for it. Yes. We always have to keep the resolver scope change and the interpreter's linked environment in sync with each other. At runtime, we create the environment after we find the method on the instance. Place the previous line of code that simply returns the method slugs function with this. So I guess we are in here. Okay, so we it's a get expression. And before we found the method and we returned it. So now we need to say method dot bind. But what is the type of a method? It is a literal value, which is just a callable. So maybe So he's just, so down here where he's implementing it, he's uh, just returning a new function with a new environment. And I guess we have to do something like that because it's Yeah, it's it's at evaluation. It's at evaluation time that we need to do this binding. So we have to do it here, which means we need a way to do this kind of wrapping. But again, what we have is a callable, 
which doesn't carry its own uh, environment. Oh, it does carry its own environment, but it's kind of implicitly hidden in here. Uh, so let me go in here to the interpreter. So it's in this make function where we clone the environment, the parent environment, and then we use that here. What is this closure though? Ah, it's, it's a field on this lux function that we don't have. So maybe we... I guess we will need then to to have the environment be some kind of data on the callable so that we can change it. And then we have to supply it to the function somehow. Uh, so that means that we'll probably need to add another argument. I'm thinking that maybe there's a better way. Like what if we had a type that was just sure it has a name, it has an arity, we need those, but it doesn't have a function. So it also has a, like a parent environment, let's call it. Uh, but it, it doesn't have the function uh, implemented as like a closure like we have here but it just has like basically the parameters and the body. What if we made something like that? And then when we evaluate it, we just run through something like this, but with the structure, it's also easy to change the environment, even change the parameters and the, the body if we want. If we wanted to add something so I don't know maybe that's that's a better way to do it I'm gonna put it as a to do I think on the other hand we have this function now here make function so it should be relatively easy to to just swap up the implementation here and, and then it will work. Let's actually try that. So a couple of things first. Um, let me get this, my notes here. And then we have these errors that we don't match on this. So let me just change those. Some of them are trivial like this one. Uh, basically that. And we also have that one, which, uh, what was that? It was to string. We don't really need the keyword, but uh, nice try. And <clears throat> all 
Okay, so now in evaluate we need to do something. Let me do this keyword and add it to do. Okay, now let's and I want to also change the structure because as you can see here, a Lux class can have a, a, a hash map of strings to any kind of value, but it's called methods. So that is not very nice. What I want to do in instead is to add a other like let's maybe it'll make sense once I write it. So let's say call it callable implementation and it should have a name an arity, which is a U size, I guess, a parent environment, which needs to be an RC ref cell to an environment, I think. Um, let me check in here. What is the environment type? No, it's just an environment. So let's let's go ahead and make this also an environment. And now the param the params is some vector tokens. And exactly. And now once we have this, we will add it here. Uh, like that we will say that a callable is something that just has the callable implementation uh, oops. let me format what's it complaining about now ah it's because this has to be capital and what's the Okay, we need to derive clone on this guy. Okay, it's probably that it's ah, it's because some of these things will now fail. It doesn't matter right now. So what I want to do now is to take this one and just not let it be a callable because we cannot we cannot refer to a specific thing, I think. Exactly now it's, uh, it's it says a found variant, but instead we can do uh, this. We refer to like the thing that's inside. That way we are always sure that it's the right type that's inside, I think. I think it's nice. I'm not sure. So let's fix up this stuff now. Um, anyway, maybe it's not like that. Maybe it's uh, like this exactly. And yeah, it's amazing. Callable implementation, exactly that. And there we go. Another one here. And again, it's callable implementation. And we need the name of and the arity. Then we can delete that one. Same deal here. Uh, Actually, I didn't know you could do some GitHub Copilot is even teaching me something. I didn't know you could do that. So I guess we can just ignore everything in this way and callable, callable implementation and we don't need anything there and we can just 
straight up panic and we we have to remember the two dots and let me uh, get this stuff the same uh, we can just call format don't need to do it myself and here's the same thing callable implementation cannot use as a truthy value delete that delete that format and what is this what was this thing doing okay okay great so now we get into some of the interesting things we don't need all of this anymore this function implementation right because we will s let's make just something let's let's make it down here just to make it easier to to look at so we need a callable implementation and it needs to take a name so name is Wait a second, let me undo this so I can just, okay, see how we did it before. So it's like kind of um, uh, consistent. So name is an anonymous function, string. It has some arity. Uh, then we need the parent environment. So uh, um, that is just environment I guess we clone it and then we params and body so params and body let's try that to see how it fails can't find params because it's called arguments This one expected a vector of statements. Why did it expect a... Or rather, why is this a vector of box of statements? Where does it come from? So maybe this will also be a box. Anyway, let me go back, please. Okay, here we are. Uh, right, so it has no field named that because it's named that. Actually, let's... Let's name it arguments. And this one won't do either because it thinks it needs like that. And it's called parent env. That's also not necessarily something I like, so let's call it environment. Okay, and now we're good to go. Now I think we can just return a callable that has the callable implementation inside. This thing we remove. So that's great. Okay, now we have a call. And now this has to change quite a lot 
So let's see. Let's first delete that. Let's add the callable implementation and let's destructure. Can you do that automatically? Copilot. No, it cannot. Okay, but anyway, we need the name, we need the arity, we need the environment, we need the arguments, and we need the body. Okay, so this the first one is ah oh, we have another set of arguments here. That is unfortunate. So it should not be called arguments, it should be called parameters. And then this thing needs to be called params. But then probably it's not... Yeah, we have an anonymous one. So this also shouldn't be called arguments, but uh, that's... That's neither here nor there. That's for another another day. So anyway, if the arguments supplied to the call is not equal to the arity, then we raise an error. That's fine. Um, what is what is it complaining about? Yeah, now it's because it's called params now. Params. Evaluate. Arguments and what is this environment? How can I? Can I do this? So that this environment doesn't shadow the outer environment. So anyway, we're calling it. We have to evaluate all the arguments, which is fine. Uh, then I suppose we have to go through the argument values like that and in the environment the function environment we have to define a string value so Right, then it's actually, hold on a second. So, so can I, how is it I enumerate? I, I kind of forget, so probably it's like that. Um, so I get the name of the int, the ith thing. I guess I need to clone it. And then I have to put that value into the environment and then uh, it is basically something like this I guess it's because I already wrote the code that it knows we, we can put the interpreter out here it doesn't need to be for anonymous for closure there's actually no difference between those, right? It's the same, same code. So whatever. We make an interpreter using this environment. Then we loop through. Evaluating failed. We don't want to use parentheses, but You know what, maybe we do, maybe we actually do want to use that. 
So now we can say that this function failed. We, we cannot say exactly which statement. So let me check out the statements. They don't. You know what we can do? We can, instead of doing this, we can say inside function at statement uh, and then Uh, there we go. Let me try to format it. Okay, anyway, so then we say we evaluate that, we check if there's a return statement, and then we return that. And now, if there is no, yeah, exactly. If there was no return statement, the implicit return statement is nil. So that's what happens when you evaluate a function. All right. So now, uh, when we get, we have to return a literal value. So let me do this and let's call this thing callable notation is that and in here we want to return yeah I guess guess it's just this I wonder if that was good enough. Let's try to run check. So it didn't quite like that. There is something in here that it doesn't approve of. Uh, do, 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 do. Ah, this is the make function thing. Let's fix that. Let's implementation I don't know why I keep writing imply and there we go it does not like that so let's call it hmm. guess we need to import that Still is complaining, which I don't get because we just we just got it from up here. ah, that's why. Now it should not. Ah, it needs the environment, sure. Environment. Okay, let's see now how we make this. So the name should be name clone for whatever reason the arity is the arity the environment is the parent environment the params is yeah maybe we need to clone it let's let's try to not clone it ah then we don't even need that 
and finally we can return a little literal value of a callable which contains the callable implementation goodbye hmm interesting let's just do that I guess now what's it complaining about here so expect the struct of this harm struct of that ah and that's because the, the make function actually should just return the callable implementation shouldn't return a, any just any literal value it has to return a callable uh, so let's see however now when we make a function uh, we have to put it inside a callable uh, like that and we have to remember that it doesn't know about raw callable okay let's run cargo check again so still there's some problems in the environment right okay Let's put the callable implementation up here. Error is zero. The environment is. cannot be none hmm, this could be a problem let's make an empty environment maybe say exactly environment empty and then it's the params something and then it's the body something okay now here we might have a problem because Well, the params is easy. It's just an empty vector. What is it complaining about here? Cannot construct due to private fields and other... Whatever. So anyway, we need a vector of statements. But... I don't think we really
So one option is to have a separate type for these like system functions or whatever you want to call them, like built-in functions. Because it, I mean, maybe that makes sense because it's a bit weird to to turn this into statements from the, the language we're building. So, but we still want to make a callable. And then in that case, it means that we need like to have a variant here. Alternatively, we just have an extra field up here. That's a bit weird. So what I want to do is to, uh, it's gonna get super nested, which is a bit annoying. But let's try it. I mean, we had to learn. So anyway, a callable is now. Let's let me put it. Let me put something on here. So public struct, and we'll call it. Actually, we'll call it a lux function. And now, a, a callable is not a struct. It's an enum, which has two variants, and one is a lux function takes a lux function implementation and the other is a the other is a native function I like that um, which takes a native function implementation and this then we yeah <laughs> exactly that and these need to I wonder if it's smart enough to know that now I want to Implement clone. Doesn't look like it. But I can just do that. Okay, great. Because now let's go, even though now we'll have a lot of things to fix in here, let's go in here and we will instead make a native function implementation. Uh, which takes name, arity, and function. So it's basically working the same way it did before. Goodbye to you. And the function is, did I, did I not? No, it is, it is an RC. Uh, <coughs> So it needs to be a seed like that. And then I want to insert, what is this problem? Not callable. Native function implementation, please. And it's not called. So it's called native function implementation. Now we have that. Then we need the, and let's call this instead the function implementation. Then we need the callable implementation, which is a callable. And that will just contain that. Ah, no, wait a second. So it needs to be a native callable implementation, native function, 
like so. This contains the new function implementation, and then this callable will contain the callable implementation. Okay, all is well except for here. Now we'll have some problems here. Right. <clears throat> so basically we need another, I guess we can do this. So if it's a lux function and a lux function, and then that needs to be like uh, so this is what I was talking about it's gonna be super listed but there we go So actually we should copy that and then we should test if it's a native function. Arguably these don't need to be. Uh, have, have this implementation type, but now they do. Okay, this guy, so two string. So if we have a callable and it is a lux function, then we unwrap it. Oops. Uh, That then we can let's try this. So from line hundred and twenty two to hundred and twenty two, we're gonna substitute locks for native and that didn't work so let's substitute logs for native also didn't work logs native okay apparently I don't know how to do that That's not what I wanted. That should be that. So I wonder, is it possible to put a wildcard in here? Looks like it. And we will do the same here, same here. Okay, so when we're defining an anonymous function, obviously it has to be a 
parallax function. which contains a lux function implementation like that. It, there we go. This thing is not necessary. Something like that. Okay. So now, now it's kind of interesting. So let's say we get a lux function, which has a lux function implementation, which has some fields. So how do we get this? Okay, let me try something. So if we get this thing and we call it, can I do this? Then I just want to call a function that I call, that I now will define later that we will say run lux function. And it returns something. So can I do this? No. Okay, I don't really want to think too much about it. Let's let's go down not here. So but here and let's make a function that we say run flux function. And it will take something that we define it should return a literal value and it will just run this code that we defined earlier so it should take a name which is a string arity which is a u size and environment which is an environment params which is a vector of tokens if i'm not Mistaken a body which is a vector of statements in a box. Then we can remove this and doesn't let me format, which is worrisome. So what's the complaint here? Right. So first of all, this kind of destructuring, unfortunately doesn't work so what I want to do is name arity environment that we will call fun env and then it's the params and the body and we put the, all of that in here Not, it's not great. I really wish I could capture this variable or this like um, this inner lux function implementation. That's really how it should be. And this this guy right here can should return. Not that, but really a result that is either a literal value or a string error message. Okay, so from looking a little bit, I came up with uh, this idea. M maybe it won't work, but We match the callable on this, and then we just like force the structure, which it allows somehow, and then we we can run the lux function. 
And now this thing should not take that. It should take the logs function implementation. It should take the arguments, which is a vector of tokens, question mark. And the, let's call it the evaluation environment, which is an environment. And then can we do this? No. Okay, it doesn't let us do that. Let me format it. Okay, so finally the format worked. So, okay, there should be nothing. Not sure. Okay, now the error is working. So, that should work. Then we evaluate the arguments. And the arguments are not this, they are pro they are probably expressions. So we evaluate those. Then We define these things in the environment. Same thing here, environment. And I think that's it. Can we live with taking a reference? Probably. No more diagnostics. Let's run cargo check. Now there's a problem in the interpreter. Right. So also when we have a function statement, it should just return a Lux function. Which has the Lux function implementation inside. Excuse me. And incidentally, we don't need all of this stuff. To do, make a structure that contains data for evaluation and implements. We don't need to implement function, but whatever. What was the parent environment? Did I accidentally delete that as well? There we go. Crack check. Another problem in here. Why? Also, we don't need this thing anymore. We also don't need that. Let me go back here and all that. Oops. Uh, okay, fair enough. Really hope we can get it running. Why? It's like it doesn't. Anyway, okay. What's the error here? Refutable. Ah. 
So I have to say if let this thing. Then we can call that and else unreachable exactly. Right. So do, 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 let's go to the call and we also want to match the callable the native function implementation damn that is that looks correct we evaluate all the arguments, we call the function. Just add a bracket too much. And also we don't need this, we can just... Call the function like that. Ah. Very nice. One more check. Let's clear this and then run Kyber check. thought just to check I thought I used the empty one oh, I guess I didn't because I decided mm, this one doesn't have an environment in the same way and this foreclosure we apparently don't use anymore let's kill it okay now comes the the moment of truth actually I'm amazed that all of these worked now th those are those are okay but at least some of the tests uh, ran without a problem so let's try to run this thing. Okay, so now there's a resolution bug. So that is not great. I wonder if it's in the call. Uh, oh, sorry, expert call. Uh, here we go. Just gonna clean it up a bit like that. Also, I'm gonna do this 
which you apparently can do. All right. I don't know why I didn't think of that. It's probably an indication that I need to take a break. So, I wanna actually just quickly try something. So, do we have something with like clock? Yes, so let me try, just try that. Cargo, run, call clock. So that ran without a problem. Which is nice. But again, if we run this one, conditional return, it says it failed at statement zero. Variable A has not been declared at distance something. Failuring field inside function. So where do I have that? Evaluating a field inside function. Okay, so when we run the logs function, it fails. And why is that? Variable A has not been declared at distance, so let me look for that. Has not been declared. So what is the uh, distance it's thing it's looking for? So it's in get. So let me just like print the distance. Perhaps this, this thing should not return an option. It should just return a value. possible to print like the values probably not right yeah uh, maybe if we debug it
Could it possibly be... Like, we have to find these things? function statement, what do we do there? Uh, <clears throat> what environment do we give it? So uh, maybe it shouldn't be the parent, it shouldn't be the parent environment, it should be something that encloses that. Didn't, didn't solve it. Okay, so I think I found the problem, and basically, um, so here in the interpreter, the environment is already enclosing it, and I think that is the correct thing to do, because here we define things directly in the environment, we don't want that to be in the that has to be the function environment, not the enclosing environment. But then when we call the interpreter for none, then we actually enclose it. So maybe let's try to make a function here that a, a method that is called uh, with env, which has an environment that we call environment and it will do exactly that and down here instead of saying for and on we say with env and let's try that so uh, now it worked it printed a lot of uh, stupid debug statements so let's get rid of that Let's verify that it's still printing some stuff. So that is this line. Now it's still printing something. Let's, how is it? Let's uh, allow that code. Okay. So that was the problem. Let's run the test suite again. And we have a failure. But it doesn't look like super horrible. Uh, oh, not that. Let's go into test cases, fun closure. Let's see what this is. So we make two counters, and they are unfortunately sharing the variable, is what we see. Hmm. Interesting, 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 interesting. Because they should count one, two, one, two, but they count one, two, three, four, as we saw up here. So that means that this i variable is shared between them, which is not good. But 
why is that that's because when we make the function they both they don't really capture it they just like got a reference to it I think is one way to look at it so So what, how do we solve this? So I'm gonna try something. <sighs> Not sure it will work, but basically the closure should capture the state of everything. It's not, it's not great, but let's let's do it. So deep clone, uh, we deep clone environment, return to new environment, and let's see. Basically, this new values. We clone all the values. Dun, 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 in closing. So actually the enclosing should be yeah. it's almost cheating to use to use this uh, GitHub copilot. Let's try that. And then we don't want clone here, we want deep clone. Let's run test cases from closure. So now that works. I don't like this solution because what we're doing is basically cloning like everything. Really what we should do is to figure out which variables we're capturing and then only clone those. Keep the rest, but like make a like keep keep the rest of the environment as a as a reference, like we had before. But but these these things that we capture, we make some kind of copy or clone of those inside the the callable. So let me right here to do the <laughs> uh, don't clone the whole environment just to capture the variables it's a very weird experience like writing with this but anyway so last try please work now it did not work function merge local environment so I don't remember why it worked before but so what's happening now is that we are making a copy of this thing and then when we modify it in here it doesn't actually change it. So to get that to work, we would need to do this. Let's say cover run test cases function. So that should work fine. Now the other thing doesn't work. No, no, no. 
and apparently it was not an issue before we and when we use those closures let's actually let's yeah, let's let's put this on its own line this what what the hell is happening with my formatting So we need to do this to do, but I think that will be another video. Let's just do something like this. Great, let's, uh, now it doesn't tell us anything. Let's run the test again because it is really only one that fails. Oh, is it? Did I implement this? Correctly, so we run a test. If it fails, we just push it here and okay, okay. Do we really only have sixteen tests? Let's says 32 why does it say 32 I mean okay so there's 32 then why are we only running 16 tests according to this Which ones are we missing? Is it stopping at the first? Yeah, it's okay. So it's stopping at the first error. I don't want that right now. So let's run these. Okay, so we have two failed tests. All in all, it's not that bad. Let's, what, what is the function definition thing? That's really weird. So probably if I go in here and use a deep clone works again. Oh, now it just completely failed. Okay. So I think that's it for this video because it's also quite long. But I think this rewriting of the callables is a good idea, especially now that we have to insert things into the function environment. Now we just have to uh, get it working again. So we'll uh, work on that in the next video. See you.